we've got Frances at Pastor Gill's right yeah. side today. He can't see her, but I can. <laughs> We're glad she's here. We welcome Eddie, our COVID survivor. <laughs> Obviously, he's doing a bit better. If you weren't plugged in at Shabbat, you didn't hear that, that uh, we were praying for Eddie. Uh, and we've been praying for uh, Beatrice not to catch it from Eddie. And so far, she looks wonderful, too. So we have a lot to thank the Lord for. We've got Nancy in here, who is a little delayed in starting chemo, but we're trusting the Lord in that. Rowena's made it in. She's not supposed to be able to, but here she is. <laughs> so we've got a great turnout, a special group, and that's not to be little Maria or Lita or Tony or Roger. <laughs> so now that all have been greeted, um, let's not delay any longer. Um, we need to open in a word of prayer and then uh, Mr. Gill will take the lead. And, uh, you know, Thursday is more interactive, so we're going to have to have you open your mic, so I'm leaving mine alone. <laughs> but uh, we want your input. And uh, Amen. Amen. Well, yeah. we will go ahead and be uh, in 1 Samuel chapter 10, because we are picking up on this story of uh, Israel's first king. We're going to see what uh, our God has done. And... Um, Again, we want to follow with the story of Shaul because uh, basically he, he really, in his life, demonstrates what is possible when God chooses us. You know, we, 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 we know that Israel has demanded a king, but yet God responds. And what we see here is that uh, the Lord is really setting up the future of the kingship of Israel, which would be through the the tribe of Judah. And um, again, we're looking at Shaul as a prototype of what uh, we believe is the little tribe of Benjamin. And uh, we know that the, uh, the Messiah was not promised through Benjamin. It was promised through Judah. And so we know that uh, the first king of Israel, again, wasn't wasn't so much that the people have chosen it. It's God is really setting up Israel now for what would be a monarchy in the future. And so it is what it is. And we're wanting to see that God is always in control no matter what happens. And even in our present day, we want to apply these uh, teachings to the present time. Is that leadership is ordained of God. And whatever office uh, of government presides over a nation, over a people. Ultimately, all of humanity is under the kingship of our Lord. He's king, uh, our God, king of the universe. He rules. The kingdom of heaven rules over the kingdoms of this earth, and we can rest assured that his purpose will be accomplished even through all the complexities of, of our human lives. And so with that in mind, I'm going to ask Rochelle that you open us in a word of prayer, and we'll proceed with our study. Lord God, we thank you that you are almighty God. We thank you that you are El Gabor, that you are in total control of our situations, and that you are raising up leaders, and you are bringing them down according to your purposes and your will. Lord, we thank you that even in the midst of COVID, we can see your hand of mercy and of grace. We thank you for the ability to connect. We thank you for the ability to be in the work together that we might grow together. We pray your blessings on all of Emmanuel Israel. For each who are here, Lord, may these words just touch the heart and, and resonate in the spirit as the Ruch HaKodesh permeates it into our, our minds and into our very souls and beings. And Lord, for those apart from us, we pray your blessing on them. There needs to be met. We thank you. Eddie is doing better. We pray for complete healing and no spread from him to anyone else. We thank you that Nancy can be with us and we pray for continued healing from her cancer, but we thank you for the mercy that we've seen so far extended for all else to Lord, you know the needs. And we thank you that you are working a perfect plan for each one of us. Now, Lord, open our minds that we might hear and receive what you have for us. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 So, uh, beginning at 1 Samuel chapter 10, we will take it up right in verse 1, where Samuel takes a flask of oil, pours it on 
the head of uh, what will be the future king of Israel, King Shaul, kissed him and said, has not the Lord anointed you a ruler over his inheritance? Now imagine the sound of that, because Shaul is clueless. Shaul had been on a mission to seek his father's donkeys. The donkeys had uh, somehow um, gone beyond his finding, and uh, it was getting late. Obviously, uh, Shaul was worried about how his father's going to uh, worry about him and the servant that accompanied him on a mission to find the donkeys. And so again, we see that our God is working out something very wonderful. And now we see what is being fulfilled is basically the cry of the Israelites had come up before the Lord. And because of the Philistines that had been oppressing them, and uh, we know that uh, when Israel cries out to God, God hears and God will always raise up a deliverer. And so we're going to see the shepherd. We're going to see the deliverer in the person of Shaul. And even with Shaul and all of his uh, human, how would we say it? His human shortcomings, as, as any human leader will have, there's always going to be shortcomings. If we're looking for a perfect godly leader, we're not going to find it this side of eternity. We're not going to find it this side of the coming of our Messiah. There's only one who is perfect, and that is the Lord himself. Amen. So unto the coming of our Lord, we look to the Lord himself as king. And whichever human ruler happens to be raised up, we know that our God is always in control. And so we're going to see now, as this, um, this story unfolds, verse 2 tells us, when you go from me today, this is the instruction of Samuel, to the future king, then you will find two men close to uh, Rachel's tomb. Now we know that Rachel, that is the one of two sons, which would be Joseph and Benjamin. What we're going to see here is how the stick of Joseph and the stick of Judah are going to be coming together. That's going to be very important in these last days because we know it's been prophesied that the two sides will come together and become one in the hand of the Messiah. And it will be the Messiah that will strike the nations as we see the culmination of history and the salvation of Israel that had been prophesied and foretold. And we know that the things that are yet to happen have been foretold, foreordained of God. So we know from scripture that it is not outside the parameters of God's ordained purpose that Israel should have a king. A lot of times we're, we're led to believe that Israel rebelled and it's demanding for a king, but it's everything's working according to the purpose and counsel of God's will. And we can rest assured that whatever takes place, whatever unfolds, we trust God. Here's where Imun and Bitachon comes in. We have to really trust them. And in the unfolding of history, in our daily lives, and in world history, we know that God is moving all of humanity to the fulfillment of a future that he has ordained. Everything leads to the coming of the Messiah. And we know that the Moshiach will come. We know that this is Israel's hope. This is our, this is our hope as, as Christians, as believers in Yeshua. We're looking to the blessed hope, the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeshua HaMashiach, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So we're looking for both sides to come together. So we want to see on the one hand, the role that uh, the tribe of Benjamin has played in Israel's history, in the days of Samuel the prophet, and in the days leading up to the first kingship, which is again Shaul of the tribe of Benjamin. We'll flash forward to the gospel age, where we find another Shaul rising up in the person of 
the Apostle Paul, who also was of the tribe of Benjamin. We see how God raised him up to lead the gospel to the very nations of the world. I mean, we're talking about the gospel to the Gentiles. So we see how God is really always working out his eternal plan. How he uses this little tribe of Benjamin is really the focus of our study this morning or this afternoon. In other words, we don't have to be big. We don't have to be grand. We don't have to be, you know, the biggest church on the planet to accomplish God's purpose. God works through the very remnant, the very least, the smallest. Why? What's his purpose? To show himself mighty, to show that it is God who does it and not man. So Israel's looking for a king. Israel's demanding a king. But what they're looking for is a champion. What they're looking for is what we see as people. We're looking for the one that fits the, the profile. The one that is of great stature. The one that has all of the, all of the trappings of what it is to be someone great. Be careful when the world is praising one person and looking to one leader saying he's the one. Boy, did they miss the mark on that one. Because we, we learned from scripture that Shaul was of great stature. Hello, Rochelle. Would you say he's of great stature? Would you say that he, is, uh, he was good looking? He was, you know, he had all the looks. He had everything. He was the, the John F. Kennedy of his day. Yeah. He had the popularity of the people. He had the admiration of the masses. And uh, when everybody is chanting and crying out for this one leader, um, it's time for us to look to God and seek his will and his counsel be done. So we're going to see that as the politics play out in this day, it's no different than in Israel's day. And so we see that Samuel himself was caught up in this. He looks at this person, he sees, okay. So now he's moving by the Holy Spirit. The anointing is coming upon Shaul. And now Shaul is receiving instruction as to what is going to happen. And so when you reach this point, these two men are going to say to you, the donkeys which you went to look. They've been found. What's the purpose of that? Why would that be of any importance to the story? Is that a code? Is it a sign? Remember, this is interactive, so I need feedback and mm -hmm. thought. Why would these two men ask this question of Shaul? He's the one that was seeking the donkeys. Can't think of anything. You no. Know? <laughs> well, they're not asking. They're telling him. They're <laughs> taking the assignment that he's had. He has not to worry about it. It's been accomplished. The task is taken care of. Now, would that be important to show? Well, he was out concerned even how long it was taking that it was going to be a concern to his father so yes he, he had enough responsibility within him that he was trying to he was trying to um uh you know help his father the way that he was intended to and he did need to know that um you know as has been prophesied to him that's going to take care of him there's something else Shaul has, has no clue no, we, that was his mission to go after the donkeys, and that's absolutely to go after those donkeys. But that's got to be, you see, off his mind because he's going into something far more important here. But Shaul, when he set out on his journey for the donkeys, he had no clue that oh, he no. would end up absolutely not face no. to face with the prophet right. no. Samuel. So again, right. circumstances unfolded that led to this divine appointment. God was setting up Shaul from the day that Shaul set out to look for the donkeys. You know, sometimes we, we try to figure out 
God's timing. In other words, where are we in all this? Where's all this headed? And we have to trust God. We have to really believe and trust God. I'm sure that when Shaul got up in the morning and set out on his journey for, for the donkeys, he had no idea that he would come back the anointed king of Israel. See, we have no clue what God has planned in the future, only that God will accomplish his purpose. And so here's the other question. Do you believe that Shaul had been appointed by God even before Shaul was born? I'm pretty sure he was. <laughs> mm. It's an amazing thing because we know that the Apostle Paul declared that he was chosen by God for the mission and the ministry that he had been ordained to from his mother's womb. That's a big claim. David also say the same thing, that, that God knew him before he came together. Absolutely. That being the case, then who are we to tamper with God's preordained plans? Well, uh -huh. to or to worry about it. God already knows who the next leaders will be. God already knows Amen. the future before we even come on the scene. And so we're seeing history unfold that had already been preordained by God. So there isn't any vote among the people that's going to change what God has already ordained. And so we have to trust them that world events will unfold regardless of who we think should be in a political office or anything. God's purpose, God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's the very essence of our trust in God. See, we who know our God know that our God will work out his purposes and his plans, not contingent upon what the people have to say. See, you would think that Shaul was the people's choice. No, it's God already chose him long before Shaul ever was born to be the king. Who oh, got you? God knew that the people will, down the line will be asking for a king. Well, absolutely. But do you believe that the people are really, are really falling into the plan of God? Yes. It was yes. ordained of that God that plan. Israel should be ruled by a king. Yeah. Matter of fact, provision was made in the Torah for the kingship and, oh, and the yeah. laws that would govern the king. So... God saw through the corridors of time that there would ultimately be a king of Israel, that there would ultimately be the Mashiach, the one that would come to rule. And so God will fulfill his purpose that we can rest assured. So Right, because God knew that the, the, uh, the, that the people were rebellious. Absolutely. So he knew uh, their heart. And it, God knew it all along because now the only thing that God gives us the opportunity before he comes to, uh, to do what he wants to do, if we are willing, you know, he will use us. But if we're not, he will still continue to do his will. Amen. Absolutely. Yeah. And so let's take it back a little bit further back. Notice the instrument that is being used to pour out this anointing oil upon Shaul. Mm. It would be Samuel. Samuel. Well, we all know the history. Samuel's mother was named Hannah. Yeah. And Hannah was barren, and she prayed that God would give her a son. And that mm -hmm. she vowed that she would dedicate her son to the service of the Lord. Now, do you believe that Samuel himself was preordained of God? Oh, yeah. And I believe in that line also, the time of his birth the time was of his also birth. ordained. Yes. Why Hannah had to wait was for multiple reasons, but... It especially was God's timing for Samuel to be born when he was, to be 
where he was at this point in time also. Absolutely. Yeah. So the chain of events leading up to this moment in history is amazing because we see the prayer of, of a Anna. woman who fears God. Yes. Amen. We see the prayer of a, of, a, of a woman who is barren, and yet her faith, her trust is unshakable, immovable. She's going to persist, and she's going to continue, and she's going to press in until one day she gets the breakthrough. Mm -hmm. And even against the criticism of the priest. Mm -hmm. You remember the, the priest, story yes. is that Eli yes. thought she was drunk, thought drunk. she was intoxicated. You should be ashamed of yourself, Anna, that you would come to the temple, you know, intoxicated. Well, did he miss it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. Eli should have been the one who had the, the insight to things that God was doing. But even the religious leaders of the day were blind leaders of the blind. So you see, we see the politics, we see the religion, we see this mixture, and, and, and we see that I think that they're both sides are just as intoxicated about things, and they're missing it. Is anybody really in tune with the Spirit of God to really understand what it is that God is doing? You see, to be, to have our finger on the pulse of God's heart. We have to have a relationship. Mm -hmm. we, we have to be spiritually in tune with the mind of God. Yes. We have that in Yeshua. Yes. So again, each and every one of us could be the next Hannah, could be the next Samuel the prophet, or go on to be a ruler, to be a shepherd of God's people. We have to tune in to what the spirit is saying, not what the people are saying, mm -hmm. not what the media is putting out there. Mm -hmm. Rest assured that God's spirit will never lead us in the way of error. Mm -hmm. And even though the world may look at us and, and, and think that we're crazy, we're out of our minds, we're being portrayed as, 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 as contrary to anything that, that, that is freedom. No. <laughs> Those who know their God will carry out great exploits. That is prophesied. And you'll be surprised who God is going to raise up in the coming days are going to be the ones that nobody's really paying attention to. But God does. Because just as the Lord heard the cries of Hannah, and it set in motion what would ultimately result in Israel's first king being anointed through the very one who was the answer to Hannah's prayer. You see, our prayers, your prayers, my prayers, it doesn't take a whole lot of us to be raised up by God to do great mighty things. It just takes a believing heart. Yeah. Just the heart of one person who truly believes and trusts in her God, trusts in his oh. God. God can work miracles and wonders. Man. And we see that in the prophet Samuel. We see that now in the later days, now that Israel is now crying out for a king, we see that, that Samuel's coming to the end of his journey and God is setting up the next. Yeah. future king of Israel. And so we know that this prophet is now instructing this future monarch. And now these two men come and they say the donkeys. You went to go look for them. They've been found. Does that put Shaul's mind at rest? You see, yeah. you didn't have to go find them. Mission was accomplished. You didn't find them. So who found the donkeys? That's a test question. Another man that was there. Oh, God. 
Jefferson. You think God's in control? Oh, yeah. You see, there's something Yeshua said. Of all whom the Father has given to me, I will not lose one. Yeah. In other words, we who have been chosen by God, the elect, oh. known before the foundation of the world, do you think God needs us to go chasing them down? No. No. That's not our worry. That's not our concern. You see? We, we stress out and how we're going to win the lost for yeah. Christ. We ought to focus more on our walk with the Lord. That's right. How our yeah. spiritual life is. Because if we're more in tune with the Spirit of God, we'll begin to see more of the power of God mm -hmm. manifesting in our daily lives. So those that are lost will be found. And you see, Shaul could not go back to his father's house claiming victory that he found them. It was not accomplished by his human efforts. Those donkeys were supernaturally what? Taken care of. You see, when we tune in to God, to his spirit, as what you're going to see now. Shaul do. You're going mm -hmm. to see that it's not dependent on any human individual. Yeah. Our Amen. faith, our trust must not be in a human being. Be it a man, be it a woman, be it a leader, be it anybody. Our faith, our trust must rest solely upon God himself. And so with that, they have been found. Your father, the one that you were anxious about, the one that you were worried is going to worry about you. The whole reason why you sought out the prophet Samuel. Well, your father has ceased to be concerned about the donkeys. He's not worried about donkeys, but he is anxious for you. Saying, what shall I do about my son? You see, we see a shift in priorities here. Sometimes we, we're anxious and worried about the wrong things. So is Shaul's father having a, an adjustment as to what matters. You see, we worry about so many things. It's like Yeshua said to, to Martha, Martha, you are, you're worried about so many things. Your sister Mary, she has chosen the one thing that matters. And what is it that matters? To be yeah, at the feet of the master. Yeah. We have an opportunity to be at the feet of the master day and night, night and day, not being anxious about the things around us, but the one thing that matters, what Yeshua told us to seek first, and that is the kingdom of God. Oh, God. Do we see the kingdom of God manifesting in this story? Yes. Is the kingdom of God advancing on earth? Mm -hmm. Yes. Is it rising yes. through its future king? Yes. Do we see the hand of God moving through the prayers of Hannah? Oh, Do yeah. we see the hand of God moving through the ministry of Samuel, the prophet? And oh, do yeah. we see God moving through Shaul's father, who sent mm -hmm. them on a mission, not for people, but for donkeys? Oh, <laughs> okay? For yeah. the donkeys. Okay? These beasts of burden, they're taken care of. Your father's not worried about them anymore. He's concerned about you. So what's a father to do? What's a mother to do about that lost son or that lost daughter? Pray. 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 Yeah. Do you believe that Shaul's father is praying for him now? Of course. Oh, yeah. Of course he is. Yeah. Does Samuel know that? Of course he does. Have they Googled each other? Have they, you know, Zoomed no. each other to know? So how does Samuel know what's going on with Saul's father? Where's he getting that information from? Well, he, he actually, uh, you know, when he left 
uh, looking for the donkeys, his father knew about it because that was the, the mission. So he, uh, Shaul knew that he was taking too long. True. And, and so he was, he was basing it in the, in the time that he was taking uh, into, uh, you know, finding the, uh, the, the donkeys. So I, if, if my, my mother or my father will know that I'm out there, uh, you know, looking for something that it was lost, and then I had not returned, they would be worried about me. Of course. Do you, do you believe that Samuel is just assuming that the father has ceased worrying about donkeys, is now concerned about, about Shaul? Or is Samuel really hearing this from the Lord himself? Probably hearing from the Lord. Because Samuel. Because Samuel. Uh, from the Lord himself. From the Lord himself. Now, is it possible for you and for me and for us to have that same ear? To hear oh, yeah. what the Spirit possible. is saying? Very possible. Oh, what yes. do you believe the Spirit would be telling us today about the events that are unfolding in our world? Not to worry about it. Yeah. Not to worry about it. Live, yes, live it in the hands of the Lord. It's in the hands of the Lord. That's being taken care yes. of. God is raising up the future king. Yeah, God is man. raising up the king who is mm -hmm. going to rule over his people, Israel. Oh, yeah. God has been doing that throughout all of history. You see, we're looking for the coming of the king. Yes. The Mashiach. Mm -hmm. The one whom God has ordained mm -hmm. to rule over all the nations of the world. Amen. His name is Yeshua. <laughs> so we see in the Father, the Son, whom the Father has ordained to rule over all the world. That's where our heart, that's where our focus and our attention should be. Not on the donkeys, not on those wild beasts that, you know, are just going to roam, you know. Mm -hmm. Take a drive down uh, Richie Canyon Road, and you have donkeys everywhere. <laughs> yeah. They are running wild. They are loose. Just let them go. Okay? Donkeys will be and donkey. do what donkeys Dunk do. Donkeys still donkeys. <laughs> yeah, donkeys will still be donkeys. <laughs> don't, don't waste our time. Don't give it a second thought about the donkeys. Our focus must be on what God is doing his time his purpose his will be done and right. so we know in verse 3 it says then you will go on further from there this is instruction to show you will come as far as an oak tree not just any oak tree but we identify where this oak is which oak tabor okay because there can be many oaks but this particular oak, that's what you're going to come to. You go as far as that, and there are three men going up to God at Bethel. Why is Bethel so important in the story? What happened at Bethel? That's the house of God. The house of God. You remember yeah, who made a the vow first, there? Yeah. Do you Jacob, remember? Uh, Jacob made a vow. Jacob, yes. Yes. Ah, do you remember he what anointed Jacob anointed that stone? Oh, Jacob made yeah. a vow at Bethel, anticipating that he was going to have a fortune. Would that fortune include all of the future of his people? Yes. The yes. Children of Israel? Including, including and do you us. remember what he vowed? Mm -hmm. Of all that you give to me, I will surely give a tenth to you. A tenth. tenth. A tenth yes. of what? Everything. Everything. Of Would that include his, the yeah, people? Possession. The, yes. His descendants. A tenth of the children of, of Israel make up the holy tithe. Prophesied in scripture is the seed holy to God. Mm -hmm. And so understand the remnant that has come through thousands of years to the present day. And it's the remnant of Israel that make up the faithful we read about in the book of Revelation. So God has been in control since there was time. 
And before time immemorial, God has already ordained his perfect will. And so what amazes me is, is now go up to Bethel. And what are you going to find? You're going to find a you're going to find some men. How many men? Three, three, men. three men. Three men going up. And they're going to up to who? To God. To God. At Bethel. They will meet you. One carrying three. Three what? Three three young goats. goats. Yes, young, young goats. goats. Another carrying three loaves of bread. Another mm -hmm. carrying a jug of wine. What do we wine. see in that? What What is being symbolized there? It's the anointing. It's yeah. the dedication. Yes. Dedication. Mm -hmm. Wow, we're seeing some awesome things in this story. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is they will greet you and give you two loaves of bread. What's the significance of those two loaves of bread? Anybody want to? Uh, two loaves no of bread. What happens Wait. if Shaul went and they offered him three loaves? He says, well, this can't be it. I'm looking for two loaves. Two loaves only. Mm -hmm. And he's mm -hmm. instructed to do what? Accept. Accept from their them. Hand. Yes. They'll offer them to you and you accept those two loaves. Afterward, you will come to the hill of God where the Philistine garrison is, and it shall be as soon as you have come there to the city that you will meet a group of prophets. Prophets. Mm -hmm. Coming down from the high place with harp, string, tambourine, string. flute, and lyre before them, and they will be Prophesying. Prophesying. Wow, that's a whole lot for Shaul to remember. Yeah. That's a whole lot for Samuel <laughs> to prophesy and say, this is what's going to happen when you get to this particular place. You see, how does Samuel know all this is going to happen? Because God is speaking it to him. You see, it's amazing when you're speaking by the Holy Spirit, you're speaking things that have yet to come. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, at what point in this story, between the time that Samuel is prophesying this to Shaul, at what point can any human potentate interrupt the plan of God and say, it's not going to be this way. I'm going to change the order of things. No one can change. No one, no one can do that. Mm -mm. There isn't a person on the planet that has the power to overrule God in what he has there's ordained. No, there's no one greater than God. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And so you see, what peace can we have in our hearts today? That no matter what's, what we're facing today, no matter what, what, what the future holds, what we think it holds, it makes no difference who the leader is, mm -hmm. well, nothing, you know, yeah, no well, some, one is going to overrule God's ordained plan. And, and that's what it's in Psalm 46, 10, it says, be still, I know that I am God. He says, I am exalted among the nations. I am exalted in the earth. Hallelujah. That right mm -hmm. there, sister, is right on cue. That's Can right. Can you imagine if, if, if the Christian world were to really, truly embrace that? We wouldn't have to get involved That's in right. worldly things. We wouldn't have to get mixed up in the politics of, of, of the world. We wouldn't. You leave it to the hands of God who works it all out mm -hmm. according to the purpose and counsel of his will. We have no business trying to manipulate things according to what we think it ought to be. Mm -hmm. No. Take our hands off of it. This is part of Amuna. This is a part of Itakon. It's yeah, to relinquish Amuna. it to okay. God. Give it to God. Let give it to the one who has it all by and his power and authority. <laughs> who has it and knows it all. 
<laughs> who has it all and knows it all and already <laughs> has has already preordained the future yes, before ordained. it even happens. That's where our trust must rest, right there. Right. We don't need to get involved. We don't need to be there trying to manipulate the outcome of anything. Mm -hmm. God is on his throne. God rules yes. from heaven over the Amen. kingdoms of this Amen. earth. And so we find then in this story, you see, verse 6 says, Then the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you mightily. You see, just, just know that something's going to happen to you, Shaul. Everything's going to change at that moment, the moment the Spirit of God comes upon you. And so, you shall prophesy with them, the prophets, and be changed into another man. You see, we may see somebody and think, my, there is no hope for that person. <laughs> but we may be 24 hours short <laughs> of the miracle of God in changing a person's life. Amen. Can God change a person in yes. an instant? Yes. Look at Shaul. Yes. Knocked him off his high horse and he became the great apostle Paul. Yeah. Here is the story of a clueless Shaul thinking that his mission was to find donkeys. Well, his mission would result in his commission to be king over Israel. Imagine that. And look at the anointing that came upon him, the power. And now he's going to be able to do what only the prophets could do. And that is to prophesy. to prophesy. In the same way that Samuel prophesied over Shaul, was able to tell him of things to come. Amazing what the Spirit of God can do in and through those who yield themselves to him. Amen. See, I don't need CNN to predict the future. I don't need the world media to pour into my heart and my mind the propaganda of Satan. What I need, what you need, what we need is the Spirit of God. Amen. Because the Spirit of God will never, ever divide us, but rather unite us in mm. one. Mm. And so we see the purpose of God unfolding right before Shaul's eyes. And with that, we know with all these things happening, you will be changed into another man. And it shall be when these signs come upon you, they come to you. You don't have to go looking for them. They'll come to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do for yourself what the occasion requires, for God is with Just one you. second. See, I don't have to sit here and try to plan out tomorrow. As the occasion unfolds right in front of you you'll know by the spirit of god in that very moment in that very hour you'll be given a mind and wisdom that will confound the wisest of the wise of this world and you see that wisdom comes from god this is what yeshua told his disciples you're going to be brought before kings before magistrates before the rulers of this world don't worry what you're going to say ahead of time. Don't try to go and prepare a speech. Mm -hmm. No. The Spirit of the Lord in that very moment is going to give you what to say. Yeah. And the yes. words that come out of your mouth by the Spirit of God, there isn't a PhD or a doctor of any degree yeah. that is going to be able to refute what you are saying by the Holy Spirit. That's the power of God. Right. Amen. And you know, in, in Matthew 6, 34, it says, therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for Amen. tomorrow will worry about mm -hmm. itself. Yeah. It yes. has enough trouble of its own. So why are we going to be worrying about tomorrow? Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Isn't yeah. that the very heart and soul of trust in God? You yeah. see, yes. Paul said this. I didn't come to you with words of human wisdom. I didn't mm -hmm. try to razzle and dazzle you into a relationship with Jesus Christ. I don't need to do that. I didn't want to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified, mm. which is the very heart of the gospel. Amen. Amen. I don't want to get into the politics and the religious things that cause so many divisions. Our nation is divided because of this, because of political and religious leaders yeah. that are doing the work of the devil to divide mm -hmm. this nation and pit each one of us against ourselves. Mm -hmm. Listen, if you truly have the spirit of God in you, it will be evident. Your eyes are going to be open to things that are hidden to those who don't have God's spirit. And with that, like Shaul, you will know in that very moment. And what the spirit gives you, what the opportunity presents right in that moment, you do. You prophesy. You speak whatever it is God gives you to say because the Lord is with you. And so, then the Spirit will come upon you. You will prophesy. You will become another man. This is what's going to happen. The opportunity will present itself. Then you will speak by the Spirit of God. And you shall go down before me to Gilga, and behold, I'll come down to you to offer burnt offerings and sacrifice peace offerings. You shall wait. How many days? Seven. Ah, uh, yes. And yeah. even a spirit-filled Shaul, after having prophesied and done all the things that Samuel the prophet had instructed him to do. The tragedy of this story? Yes, the he wait. He didn't wait. <laughs> <laughs> he did not yeah. wait. wait. Yeshua commanded that we wait. Amen. That we watch and that we pray. Not to step into the politics. Not to step into all of these worldly things. Trying to make something happen. That's manipulation. That's the very essence of witchcraft. Mm -hmm. You see? Be careful when we get caught up with the spirit of this age. Mm -mm. Because we know that there are deceiving spirits that have gone out. And we know that there are doctrines of demons even creeping into the church this very day. Yes. We know the hour is late. The days are evil. There is only one church among the seven of the apocalypse that is called faithful. Mm. And it is the called and the chosen and faithful ones who will be standing with the Lamb on that day. And so, it is time for God's people, his chosen people, the remnant of his people to come together in one. Because together we make up what? The house of God. We have the Spirit of God, and by the Spirit we are led and by the Spirit we speak. Everything contrary to that is our flesh. And we're going to find in our next story that Shaul succumbed to that temptation. He took matters into his own hands. Yes. He mm -hmm. didn't wait. You see, we too can make that spiritual blunder. It would ultimately lead to his disqualification as king. He had an opportunity to rule. But notice, he was chosen to be a ruler, but there's only one king of Israel, and that is through the tribe of Judah, the Lion of Judah, who's none other than Yeshua himself. So there'll be many rulers, but there's only one king who shall rule for all eternity. His name is Yeshua. Yeshua. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. I know you're just Hallelujah. aching to speak. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Just contemplating, um, you know, what you say resonates, I know, with all of us. Amen. Yeah. Um, 
I, I find it interesting uh, back a little ways when you were bringing out the two lobes. Mm -hmm. um, right? There's still, I don't have all digested here, <laughs> but it, I, I find it interesting. They start, they meet it at Rachel's sepulcher. Mm -hmm. We think of another sepulcher. We think of the death that was atoned for, but I mean the sins that were atoned for by that death. Yeah, but Jesus. I think how many at that moment of death, if they didn't stay tuned into the Lord, they'd miss that resurrection because it looked like Satan's victory. Yeah. I know he thought he had victory. Um, you know, I think that's where we have to just stay the course to not give up to hang in there to wait on that timing because the morning comes the resurrection comes I, I see they go from the sepulcher to the place where they're going to make the sacrifice and the lord provides for the sacrifice because mm -hmm. he provided the kids but i also mm -hmm. see in the loaves and the wine of course we see you know the, the bread of life at the fruit of the vine we see the pictures of the lord right the there the pictures of the lord are all over this yeah. story and and how mm -hmm. it's shared with Shaul. Yeah. You know, it's for all. It's for all. It's for all. So I it's think there's all. a lot there that, like I say, I don't feel like I've got the full depth of that yet. So my mind's working on this. <laughs> as, as, as you go deeper and deeper into the, the, it never ends. the spiritual connotations of what is happening here, mm -hmm. you can't get this. No. In a degree program. Yeah. You get this from the spirit of the Lord who opens amen. you up to the things that have been hidden. Yes, yes, amen. You have to wait on the Lord. You have to wait on the Lord. And he will he will deepen your knowledge and understanding of things that are so right in front of you. But most people miss them because they're not in tune with God's spirit. Yeah. That and, and patience. Go patience, through. yes. How you wait on the start Lord. start out good? Shaul started out good, but how many don't make it to that end because they get impatient? That's right. Because they think that they've got to help the Lord, <laughs> and even though they don't mean to. That's what we're doing when we jump in there and try to fix it or try to do mm -hmm. it or whatever. That is our impatient natures that aren't waiting on the Lord. And as you open it up with the, the um, thoughts of the timing of God and how he's preordained, I think that that's what we really need to remember here right now because i hear um you know the the heartbeat of the people in general right now if it's you take it to heart if it's not pray for those who are but that heartbeat is wow we've lost a year 2020 is going down in flames you know it's been a disaster we're still stuck they're talking about you know months with this and and the discouragement that wants to sow into the heart that discord here's where i just I hear the Lord saying, you know, my soul wait thou only upon God. My expectation is from thee. And that's where I see, you know, if Shaul would have stayed and we waited on the Lord, I know I'm going ahead, yes. but I think we all know what. Yeah, you're bringing up next time. next week's study. He <laughs> 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 had to wait on God that time. Yes. And we see time in that. We see he was worried about his dad worrying about him. His dad was worrying about him. Time, we are so time conscious. And, you know, I, I said the other day, you know, again, heaven to me, no clocks. Rowena says, no calendars. <laughs> 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 because she's stuck fighting with that calendar like I'm stuck fighting with the clock. But the word to, to encourage each and every one of you, the time is not lost on the Lord. This no, is not. orchestrated by his hand. As hard as it is for us to understand, it's not that he he um, he didn't make COVID, but he is not. Uh, it's not more powerful than he, and it, it's not lost on him. The timing isn't. I wonder how many are being reached for the Lord now that their circumstances are so difficult. You know, most people don't have time for the Lord. They don't have time for that spiritual until a moment of crisis. So here we pray, Lord, stop it, you know, end it. 
free us. You know, we, we want that. And yet, I think, are we pushing against God's timing? Because in this timing, in this hardship, there are those coming to him. And that's what encourages me in the, in the frustration of the moment to say, wait my soul upon the Lord. He's at work. He's doing a mighty work. And who is it? Who am I to come against his perfect plan and think that I've got a better timing, but this needs to end? So it encourages me not to pray for an end, but to pray for people in it. Amen. To pray that, that more and more do. My constant prayer is, Lord, let more get saved because of than die from. Right. And I believe my God can do that. Prayer, we'll look forward to our next group meeting on uh, Shabbat. So don't forget to plug in for that time. It's rich in many ways also. <laughs> um, but uh, um, Maria. May I ask you to close us in prayer? Hallelujah. Sure, sure. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for, for your love and for your mercy and for your provision. You provide food for our souls and food for our bodies, Father, because with you, we lack nothing. And that's what your word says. If we are in you, Lord Jesus, we will never, you will never leave us nor forsake us. What a promise we have in you. Father, thank you so much for today. Thank you that you have blessed us uh, with your word. And uh, Father, we just uh, help us to turn our eyes uh, to you. Turn our, our, uh, our hopes in you. Let us turn our, uh, all our, our uh, problems, Father, to you. Yes, because you, you are El Shaddai. The God that of impossibles, Father, we can trust thoroughly in you. And what a, how more can we be blessed, Father, in these times of trouble? We know that you are the one that is holding us fast. You are the one, Father, that uh, keep us going. And uh, Lord, I just help each and every one of us, Father, to continue to rest in you, to continue to uh, share your goodness with those that uh, come before us, Lord, people that you have placed before us. And I pray, Father God, that you prepare th those hearts that we're going to be sharing with so that your word can be uh, fertile uh, when it land on that heart, Lord. Thank you so much for loving us. Thank you so much for choosing us, Father. And uh, thank you that we can trust you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Okay. amen. amen. Shalom, everybody. It's been a blessing. She has been a blessing. Yes, this, yes. Been blessed. This is truly a blessing. I'd like to uh, just do a shout out to all our audience. This is the teaching ministry of Emmanuel Israel. It is an outreach, missionary outreach of Hebrew Christian Witness based in San Bernardino, California. We are grateful. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom. Hearing our prayers, and we're here for you. Shalom, yeah. shalom.